we've got a, an example here so uh, what I'm going to do is read this now uh, to the three basic SI units the meter kilogram and second we now so to the to these three basic SI units that we already aware of the meter kilogram and second we're now going to add a fourth the unit of electric charge this unit was named the coulomb and uh, in the equation uh, F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared the electric constant K is the syst is in is in this system K equals 8.98755 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared per coulomb uh, squared and uh, th this can often be written like this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught now uh, in the equation uh, the electric constant K is as, as stated although that might appear to complicate things it actually simplifies many formulas later on uh, so this Coulomb's law is usually written as 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 follows yeah so this is where the K is coming in so don't worry about the K it's not really important because this is remember this is uh, something that was proved experimentally so we we know that there, there, there was some constant there in front of this yeah uh, so that we could get you know some relative size of this force so they introduced a constant and what they've done here is uh, to make them to make some of the mathematics a little bit easier later when we start calculating spheres and such like they've actually uh, May they've actually just converted that into four, 4 pi epsilon naught and derived epsilon naught from this number. So this is a constant. This has been discovered empirically. So uh, don't get confused by that. Don't think that's anything complicated. That's basically just a constant, uh, a physical constant, and and we're we're stuck with it. And that's the value it is. So that's all you need to worry about. That the important thing is to realize that that is a, a constant of proportionality, and. Uh, it, basically, the important thing here is this relation between the charges and the fact that their uh, their attraction is an inverse square law. Yeah, so that's really the main point. Uh, thus, Coulomb's law is written this way. Often, we will use the shorthand version of one over four pi epsilon naught, as I've just discussed. Uh, and and the other thing to note is a coulomb is a huge amount of charge. We normally deal in units of microcoulombs when we actually do calculations. So now I'm going to just give you a quick example problem here. In this diagram, two equal positive charges, um, Q, this Q here is, um, oh, well, they're equal, so the Q here is uh, two times, these two charges are equal, and uh, it's two times 10 to the minus 6. Now, th this question says, in a diagram, these two charges uh, which are equal charges, 2 times 10 to the minus 6, interact with a third charge, this one here. Uh, we want to find the magnitude. Okay, yeah, I've written the question here, so you might want to read that as well. So, uh, in the diagram below, two equal positive charges, Q equals 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, interact with a third charge, Q, time, Q equals 4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, find the magnitude and direction of the total resultant force on Q so we're gonna we we wanna find the total resultant force here so have a think about how you might do that and uh, if if you're familiar with vectors have a have a, have a think about that and uh, and then uh, continue with the video and I'm just gonna give you the solution to that it's quite evolved so uh, don't worry if you don't know how to do this because what it's actually going to do is is show you some a nice little result so uh, don't expect you to be able to figure this out if you've never seen this before so don't worry if you can't figure it out but have a go anyway so uh, let's go on to the next sheet so here's the answer uh, now the key word is total we must compute the force each charge exerts on Q2 and then obtain the vector sum of the forces so uh, rather on on the the on the Q. So the key word is total. We must compute the force each charge exerts on Q, and then obtain the vector sum of the forces. This is most easily accomplished by using components, uh, mathematical components. The diagram shows the force on Q due to the upper charge, Q, due to this upper charge Q. Okay, so you can see there's a force here due to this upper charge upper charge Q. This force here. Now from Coulomb's law. Uh, the force, this force, equals 9 times 10 to the, to the, here we go, 
9 times 10 to the... Uh, this is the uh, K constant, of course. <laughs> 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb me per meter squared. Then we've got the two charges. So there's the K constant. We've got the two charges. So we've got this charge, which is that, this first one here. Then we have this charge. So we're, we're multiplying those together. And then we, we're given the distance here is 0.5 meters. So then we square that. That gives us the size of this force. As a, as a scalar quantity, it gives us 0.29 newtons. So that's the size of the force, the scalar quantity. The components of this force, so when we want to uh, resolve the components of this force in the x and y, uh, we can find the component in the f in the x direction is f cosine theta. So here's the angle theta. Now you know that uh, if you do uh, this side is equivalent to f cosine theta. Now, hopefully you know that. You'll know your trig here, yeah? So, uh, so for this, uh, this x component is simply the hypotenuse multiplied by the cosine of the angle between these two lines in a right angle triangle, yeah? So it means that that f, f, f of fx is simply the, the, the size of the force, which is the scalar quantity we just worked out, times cosine of the angle between these two. So that's why we've got here, we've got F cosine theta. This is just uh, resolving forces, really. So then we've got 0.29, which is the force. And then now cosine theta is simply, uh, we can then construct this and see where we're going. Because look, uh, the angles are equal here. OK, so we know that that's 0.5. These are opposite and equal angles. That's 0.5. And then we have um, 0.4. So that's that side here. So what we're saying is, you know, remember that the cosine theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So it's point. So cosine theta is 0.4 meters divided by 0.5 meters. So we can just as easily write cosine theta as 0.5 divided by, uh, sorry, 0.4 divided by 0.5. So if we just multiply that out, then we've got the fx component. So the force in the x is 0.23 newtons, and then. Similarly, we do the same for the y. So in the y, now notice the y is going down. Now, when we define this diagram, we define the positive y-axis as going up, OK? And uh, because of the position of this, obviously the fy is going down. So this is why we've got the minus sign here. So that becomes minus 2.9. Again, same, same idea here. We've got 0.3, which is this side here, uh, divided by... 0.5, which is a hypotenuse again, okay? And you can, you can see that by the constructing of a triangle here. If you bring that across, you can see the, the angles. So again, you've got uh, f of y is minus 0.17 newtons. Uh, the lower charge q, now this is where it gets interesting. This lower charge q exerts a force of the same magnitude, but in a different direction. From symmetry, we see that its x component is the same as that due to the upper charge, but its y component is opposite. Hence, the y component becomes zero, because you can see that the contribution from this charge and this charge are going to be the same in the y component, but in the x component, they're actually going to add. So you're going to get, you're going to get two, two times what we first calculated. Now, that, I hope that's clear, you know, because basically we've got a component in the x from this one and a component in the x from that one, and they're both going in the same direction, so they add you know, that's the supposition principle as you add. So uh, the y's, they're going to cancel because they're in opposite directions, yeah? From this one, the y's in that direction. So they both cancel. So that makes it easier because then we've only got to work out the x component. So uh, the x component there is, again, it's uh, 0.46 in this case. It's 0.46. And uh, so then, because obviously it's... Uh, it's two times 0 0.23, uh, uh, 2, 3, uh, which is that. So we've got two times, as I said, you're doubling up. So it's two times 0 0.23, which gives you 0.46 newtons. So finally, uh, we've got this situation. We've got the force, uh, the vector is 0.46 newtons in the i, in the x direction, or, in, or as we put here, i, for those who, of you who understand vectors. Uh, the total force on Q, and by the way, if you don't understand vectors, you'll need to go over the uh, lecture on vectors or at least uh, brush up on your vectors, so this is not going to make a great deal of sense. 
the total force on Q is horizontal with magnitude 0.46 newtons. So it's going 0.46 that way. Uh, it's it's not always obvious, but if you just think about what we've said about the supposition principle and how uh, charges uh, attract and repel one another, then it's it's not really too difficult to follow. So let's go over to the next part.